Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, thank you, thank you. For the good work you've begun, thank you. For reversing cases, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. Please pick up your Bible quickly and open with me to the book of Isaiah chapter 65, verse 20. Isaiah 65, verse 20. Today is our covenant day of long life. Please take a seat. You can take your seat. Please take your seat. Is our covenant day of long life. And God is about to do something new. He has started already. He has started already. Isaiah 65, verse 20. I would like us to read it together as a church. One, two, go. There shall be no more tents, an infant of days, nor an old man uh -huh. shall die a hundred years old. But the sinner, being a hundred years old, shall be a cause. Look at it, what the Bible there is speaking. That a child will die at what? At hundred years old. That is to say, you are not permitted to die before 100. I thought we have a believer in the house this morning. You are not permitted to die before 100. Then at 100 is the child. Even if you want to go before 100, we we'll, we'll, we'll run after you. No, you are not going yet. It's not time yet. I decree by the word of God this morning, based on this word, based on this revelation, Anyone here with death sentence on their life, I declare that sentence cancelled in the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone that has gone up concerning your life, concerning your health, that you will not live to enjoy the works of your head, your labors, I decree that God Almighty will visit their camp in the name of Jesus Christ. God Almighty that has vowed that today he wants to renew that covenant of longevity with you, that God will avenge you speedily in the name of Jesus Christ. And even though if it's in your bloodline, it's a biological family that are dying before their time, for you, you are exempted in the name of Jesus Christ. And for your sake, your extended families, they are covered too in the name of Jesus your children, they will not die long in the name of Jesus Christ. You will live to see your children's children's children in the name of Jesus. In good head, in sound mind, in the name of Jesus Christ. So shall it be in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord, I am more than a conqueror. I want to specially welcome every one of us to this service. As we have heard it, it's our covenant day of long life. And I see God renewing that covenant with you in this service in the name of Jesus Christ. Our prophetic focus remains as our seasons of glory. Say it, seasons of glory. If you can, can you personalize it? This is my season of glory. Help me turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, this is my season of glory. So shall it be in the name of Jesus Christ. And our teaching series, which we began three Sundays ago, and today we shall be looking at part four of it, is caption as understanding the blessedness of a revival. Understanding the blessedness of a revival. For sure when, in our midst of revival, the midst of the year is a season of revival. According to God's calendar, the midst of the year is our season of revival. And season of revival it empowers us. It changes us. Why? Because in the midst of the season of revival, the Spirit of God keeps moving. Keeps moving. And anytime the Spirit of God moves, it moves people forward. It advances people. Hear this. If you are still at the same place where you are at, from the beginning of this month, you are still, your spiritual level is still at the same place. <laughs> you better blame yourself. Because everyone is advancing already. Everyone is advancing. And it's not too late. If you have not catched that fire, it's not too late. And I see you returning with that fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Quickly, we have two definitions. What is a revival? What is a revival? 
What is a revival? Number one, a revival is a move of the spirit across the people of all age groups. I take it once again. A revival is a move of the spirit across the people of all age groups, culminating in diverse supernatural turnarounds. Culminating in diverse supernatural turnarounds. We can see that account in the book of Joel chapter 2, Joel 2 verse 28 to 29. The book of Joel 2, 28 to 29. And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And it went further, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. Looking closely at that scriptures, it means that no one is exempted. To a revival, no one is exempted. No one is counted out. Servants are part of it. Your sons are part of it. Your daughters, they are part of it. Old men, old men, they are part of it. The youth, they are part of it. Everyone is part of it. I'm not surprised during the week I received a call from the teens church that even our teenagers, they are passionate about things of God. They want to know more about the Holy Spirit. They want to be baptized by immersion. They want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We are all in a revival. We are all in a revival. And not only that, it accumulates in our supernatural turn, turn around. That is issues that are of concern, God handles them. Things that are troubling you in the midst of revival, God levels them down. How do I know that? Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 6. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 6. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 6. He stood and measured the earth and beheld and drove asunder the nations. And the everlasting mountains were what? They were shattered. Everlasting mountains, they were shattered. The perpetual hills, they did bow. His ways are everlasting in the midst of revival. We experience supernatural turnaround. Things that look impossible, God make them possible. People that, are, that were living in fear before, talking about the disciples, Peter particularly, he betrayed Jesus Christ. He denied Jesus Christ. Why? A little girl came to him and said, Are you a part of his disciples? You are part of his followers. And Peter wrote, He denied Jesus Christ. But when the Holy Ghost came in Acts chapter 2, when revival came, he was bold enough to stand before men, before all the people, and began preaching about Jesus Christ. During revival, God turns a non-entity to become an entity. That's why you must not take this season for granted. For ordinary men, yes, it's June and July, but for you, you are a spiritual-minded person. You must know that this season, spiritually, is for your own benefit. It's for your own opportunity, for your own change of levels. And I pray that God will grant every one of us understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. Look at it. When the Spirit of God comes, it turns things around. Isaiah chapter 32 verse 15. Isaiah 32 verse 15. Until the Spirit be poured upon us from on high, and the wilderness be a fruitful field, and the fruitful field be turned toward to a forest. But look at it. From the beginning it was a wilderness. From wilderness now to, to become a fruitful field. From a fruitful field to become what? A forest. After the Holy Ghost come. After the Holy Spirit is poured upon us. Any area you are experiencing wilderness experience, by the reason of this revival season, I see God turning them around for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Number two, what is a revival? A revival is a move of the Spirit of God that unleashes 
the spirit of prayer and supplication upon God's people. I'll take it once again. A revival is a move of the Spirit of God that unleashes the spirit of prayer and supplication upon God's people, resulting in massive salvation of souls and explosive church growth. It results in massive salvation of souls and explosive church growth. When we are in a revival, everyone is on fire especially on the prayer altar to be cold spiritually is a danger is a risk especially for our mothers in the house you all agree with me that when the burner is cold fly can play around that burner but when the burner is on fire the gas cooker at home when it's on fire when it's hot even insect knows that no <laughs> it's a no-go place because when they go near it they will burn the same way it is in this kingdom spiritually when you are cold the devil throws all manner of things at you but when you are hot you are vibrant the devil will never near you the same way a madman, a man that is out of his senses, that has mental problem, cannot see a fire and run into it. When a madman sees a fire, he takes off straight away. He knows that no, this is danger. That's why as a believer, you must not be cold. Hear me tell you, neighbor, neighbor, don't be cold spiritually. You must be hot. You must be on fire. One scripture that oh, I always like so much in the scriptures is Matthew chapter 11 verse 12. It says, since the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God is suffered violent. And they that are violent, they take it by force. Revival season is a season of power. When we are empowered, the enemy will be on the run. The enemy will be on the run. And we cannot be empowered until when we go on our knees. Why? Because a prayerful Christian is a powerful Christian. That's why during this revival season like this, the spirit of prayer and supplication is poured upon us. If you flip that quote that I quoted, a prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. A prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. Revival season, we are empowered. And not only that, it has impact on our community. You see souls coming in, tripping in. That was what happened in Azusa, Azusa Street. William, I mean, uh, Simone and other brethren, they gathered in America. They were praying. 1906, they were about. Praying in a room. Making a demand for revival. Praying and praying. To the point that the house where they were literally was on fire. People outside, they saw fire. They called the fire engine, they came. When they come closer, they don't see fire, the fire engine. When they go distance again, they turn their back, they see fire again. <laughs> they kept going forward and backward during revival season. We don't wait for revival to happen. We pray down revival. We pray down revival. I pray that the spirit of prayer and supplication upon your life will never go down in the name of Jesus Christ. The fire will not go down in the name of Jesus Christ. Zechariah chapter 12 verse 10, Zechariah 12 10, and I will pour upon the house of winners and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplication and they shall look upon me whom they have pierced and they shall mourn for him. 
as one born for his only son. And if you jump to Isaiah chapter 66, Isaiah 66, Isaiah 66 from verse 7 to 8, Isaiah 66, 7 to 8. Isaiah 66, 7 to 8. Before she traveled, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a male child. Who had had such a thing? Who had seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as winners they travel, she brought forth her child. We must travel in order to prevail. We must go on our knees to pray, to pray, to pray. It's all evidence in our midst here that our six hours prayers, you see people on fire, connected. Six morning in the morning, coming out of prayer, they are there. 12 o'clock, noon, people are there joining. People are passionate. They are in revival. We are all in revival. 6 p.m., people are there. 12 midnight, people are there. I pray that God will continue to embrace every one of us in the name of Jesus Christ. No one here will miss out in the name of Jesus Christ. No one here will miss out in the name of Jesus Christ. Please don't be an onlooker this season. Don't be an onlooker. God has vowed that this season he said to do new things for us. He wants to change our story. From those testimonies shared to us this morning, this can only be God. Our brother testified, 24 of them, they about started a course. But down the line, everyone gave up. But only four of them graduated. Only a winner and one, and one Indian and, one, and uh, two British. This can only be God. Let's give Jesus a clap offering for that. For that academic success. This can only be God. And our brother as well, that came and he had an encounter. God still brought him back. He came here to write exam, but God still returned him back because God knew that he had an assignment for him. And today, he's got his residence uh, uh, permit. Let's give Jesus Christ a clap offering. You see, a revival season will never leave you at the same place it met you. If you are still at the same place, it's your fault. It's no one's fault. Many people are diving in. We want revival. We want change. I said this, I think, in our midweek service, that look, where you are right now, if he's not tired of you, where you are is tired of you. There are other people in the queue. They are waiting for you to move, to move. Get out of that place so that someone else can occupy it. You don't wait for things to happen. You make this to happen. Our Father will always say it, that anyone that makes God absolutely responsible for the outcome of his life <laughs> is an irresponsible faith. Any faith that makes God absolutely responsible for the outcome of his life. Don't sit on the fence this season of revival, jump into it, dive into it. Myself, I've encountered it. Even this week, I encountered it. What amount of money was paid into my account? I was wondering, how, where is this coming from? No, my wages. Where is this coming from? <laughs> God knows the way He does His things. Just plug into it and leave the rest for God. Matthew 6 3 is the code. Is the code. It works like fire and it's still working. I pray that this is in God who change your story in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's move forward. A revival is said to occur. Two things. Number one is that when prayer or when praying kingdom advancement prayer becomes a delight. When praying kingdom advancement prayer becomes a delight. It becomes a way of life. That's why we see people are in revival. When you are praying kingdom advancement prayer, you are not praying about bread and butter. Rather, you are praying that Lord let your will be done. Matthew 6 6. Matthew 6 6. Jesus Christ taught us that we should pray this way. 
that uh, but thou when thou prayest enter into thy closet and when thou shut thy door pray to the father this way and the father which said thee in secret will already open it and he went further verse 9 and 10 now he said you should pray this manner that our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven we pray down the kingdom of god into people's hearts we pray down the kingdom of god into people's hearts people that are misbehaving that are sleeping in sin that are in the in, in, in the camp of the devil that lord let your kingdom come let your kingdom reign in the hearts of men and women praying that lord open the windows of heaven and pour out righteousness and let there be salvation of souls across Nottingham and beyond. You make it a way of life. The issues of God are your concern. All you are doing is seeking for how to promote, advance the kingdom of God. Not about me, 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 me. No. We have left that level a long time ago. The level where we are now is that we are praying, we are advancing the kingdom of God on the altar of praying. On the water of prayer, pray the kingdom of God advancement prayers. First Thessalonians chapter five verse seventeen. First Thessalonians five seventeen. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Hear this: You cannot be praying kingdom advancement prayer and remain at the back among men. You cannot be promoting the kingdom of God and God will not promote you. It's never too late. The six hours prayers we are praying is never too late. Be part of it. Be part of it. Be part of it. I know you are busy, but are you busier than God? Are you busier than God? Who here is busier than God? The Bible says he never sleeps nor slumber. The same way you create time to eat, you must create time to pray as well. If you can't join the six hours, you can schedule your own time as well. If it's 30 minutes, if it's one hour a day, do that. It's an investment. And God takes record. He keeps record. He will never forget your investment. God pays the best. And he pays the most. For all your engagement all through this season, I see God paying you heavily in the name of Jesus Christ. A revival is said to occur, number two, when one is consumed with undying passion to see souls saved. Number two, when one is say is consumed with undying passion to see souls saved. That's when we say revival has occurred. What is your passion? That's a question for every one of us. What are you passionate about? Are you passionate about souls or are you passionate about things? Hear me ask your neighbor, neighbor, what are you passionate about? What did your neighbor say? Huh? <laughs> when you are passionate about souls, there are many out there that are dying. They are in the camp of the enemy, the devil. The enemy has blindfolded them. The enemy has blindfolded them. Please, let's focus here, please. Focus here. Ushers, please, take care of that. That's why, as a believer, we need to stand. Why? Because there is nothing that touches the heart of God outside of souls. God loves so, so, so much to the point that he gave his best. He gave his only begotten son for the redemption of mankind. When you are out there reaching out to souls, you are touching the heart of God Almighty because he loves souls. Say, so what will it profit a man if he lost his souls? If he loved, like if, if he gained the whole world and lost his soul? I pray that your love for souls will never go down in the name of Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 1 verse 16. Romans 1 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ.
for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. No wonder our Father in the faith, Bishop Dede Odepo, will only say one thing. He has said it many times that he only set target. He, there was a day he said he told God, "Lord, this week I want one thousand souls." He died hard man, passionate about souls. It's not about church then. It's about it's the will of God. So willing is the will of God. Jesus Christ gave us a command, commandment to go into the world and preach to all nations. I pray one more time for you that your own passion will never go down in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that you continue to reach out to souls in the name of Jesus Christ. There are many out there that are yet to be saved. There are many out there that are yet to be saved. If your passion towards souls, salvation of souls, if it's cold, it means that you are not in revival yet. Your neighbors, there are a lot of them that are yet to be saved. Your colleagues, there are many of them that are yet to be saved. Even your extended family members, there are some of them that are yet to be saved. If you can't preach them, invite them to church. Invite them. And I pray that God will grant you more understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. This season will answer for you in the name of Jesus Christ. This season will be your own season in the name of Jesus Christ. As you are seeking after the kingdom of God, advancing the kingdom of God, I pray that God will announce you to in the name of Jesus Christ. This season will be your own season in the name of Jesus Christ. This season shall be your own season in the name of Jesus Christ. This season shall be your own season in the name of Jesus Christ. What are the benefits we stand to enjoy during revival? What are the benefits? Number one is that every move of the Spirit of God, it confers dominion on every engaging believer. It confers dominion on every engaging believer. That is, during revival, for those that are engaging, they are empowered to dominate. They have dominion over issues. They are empowered to be in command, to be in control of issues. To be in control for Jesus Christ. To be in control in their business, in their careers. I pray that the revival fire you will not go down in the name of Jesus Christ. Proverbs 11.30. Proverbs 11.30. The fruit of the righteousness is a tree of life. And he that winneth so is what? Is wise. When you see a man winning so, that man is what? That man is wise. And Proverbs 4.17 says that wisdom is the principal thing. That is, wisdom is very important. When you see a man, a woman, going after souls, it means that that woman or that man is what displaying wisdom. And the Bible also says that by wisdom, kings, they reign. Proverbs 8, 15 to 18. Proverbs 8, 15 to 18. By me, kings reign. That's talking about wisdom there. And princes, they decree justice. By me, princes, they rule and nobles. Even all the judges of the earth. It went further in verse 18. It says, riches and honor are with me. Yea, durable riches are and righteousness. Durable riches and righteousness. So, when you go about winning souls, God will continue to release wisdom upon your life. And when you have wisdom, supernatural wisdom, you can never be stranded in life. You always have the solution. Anytime life throws, anything life throws at you, you know what to do. You know how to go about things. According to the definition of our Father in faith, Bishop David, he said, Wisdom is knowing what to do and doing it. Wisdom is knowing what to say and saying it. Wisdom is knowing where to go and going there. Revival, it confers, it empowers us to take charge, to have dominion. 
I pray for you that you continue to have dominion in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You will not go down in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. At the beginning in Genesis chapter 1, God created us. He said, have dominion. That's what we are designed, we are programmed to do. But sin came and we lost that position. But when you go about winning souls, God empowers you. You continue to win more and more. I pray that that will be your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. Number two benefit is that our needs are supernaturally met in a revival. Our needs, they are supernaturally met in a revival. God is not looking for who to use during revival. God is looking for who to bless. He's looking for who to bless. Don't sleep during this time of revival. Wake up. Be a partaker. Be part of it. We have had so many testimonies. And I know that yours shall be the next in the name of Jesus Christ. Luke chapter 22 verse 35. Luke 22 35. And he said unto them, When I send you without horse and squeak and shoes, lack ye anything? And they said what? They said no. And I'm very sure if they lacked anything, Thomas, the doubting Thomas, we, we've raised our said, yes, we lack something. But indeed, they never lacked anything. When you plug into this revival season, all your needs shall be met. Those breakthroughs you are desiring, they shall be met. Immigration breakthrough, they shall be met. Your marital settlement is a done deal. Whatever need it is, God have the capacity to make it happen for you. And I see God granting you understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. I would like you to ask the Lord, go ahead now and ask the Lord, release your fire, fresh fire upon me, Lord. Fresh fire of revival, release it upon my life, Lord. I receive fresh fire, Lord, this morning. I receive fresh fire this morning. I receive fresh fire this morning. I receive fresh fire this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Please, let's plug into it. This operation, reach for the stars, is just one more week to go. And God is saying, present it to me one soul, just one soul. I pray that you will not disappoint God in the name of Jesus Christ. Today is our covenant day of long life. And I see God to be known the covenant of longevity with us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I would like us to know that Jesus Christ already had conquered death for us in redemption. Jesus Christ has paid the price for us in redemption. Hear this and hear me well. Jesus Christ died young in order for you to live old. He died at the age of 33 in order for you to live longer. You are not permitted to die before your time. He has paid the price and he paid it fully. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14 to 15. Hebrews 2 14 to 15. For as much then as the children are partakers of the flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. That through death he might what? Destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. So he has paid the price already for you. It is not death that kills people. It is the fear of death that kills people. It is the fear of it. It is the fear of it. Job was speaking. He said, the things I greatly fear has come on me. Don't be afraid of death. Let me tell you, neighbor, neighbor. Don't be afraid of death. Come on, are you talking to your neighbor as well? Don't be afraid of it. Christ has paid the price for you. Death has no power over you. You shall live long in the name of Jesus Christ. You shall live long in the name of Jesus Christ. Here is what the Bible says in 1 John chapter 4 verse 4. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Christ has power over death. And Christ lives inside of you. Greater is he that is in you. You are unkillable. Say it me, I am unkillable. Say it me, I am unkillable. 
But the truth is this, as far as your eye can see, it shall be given unto you. I wish I can help you to see it. But I can only, read, I can only share the revelation with you. It is as far as your eye can see it. Genesis chapter 13, verse 14 to 15. Genesis 13, 14 to 15. And the Lord said unto Abraham, or Abraham, after that Lord was separated from him, lift up now thy eyes, and look from the place where thou art, northward, and southward, and eastward, and westward. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. It is as far as your eyes can see. It is as far as your eyes can see. It is as far as your eyes can see. I pray in this service, you see well in the name of Jesus Christ. Look at this. Moses saw 120. And that was what God gave him. God has given us that blank check. It is up to you what you feel inside. Moses saw 120 as God's lifespan for man and he departed exactly at 120. Genesis chapter 6 verse 3. Genesis 6 verse 3. Genesis 6 verse 3. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. Moses saw it. This was what was written. And that was exactly what happened to him. Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 7. Deuteronomy 34, verse 7. The book of Deuteronomy, your enemy. All your enemies shall be dethroned today in the name of Jesus Christ. Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 7. And Moses was 120 years old when he read, when he died. He saw 120 and exactly 120 he died. His eyes was not dim nor his natural force abated. At 120 he was still bouncing. No using glasses. He could see clearly. David saw 70. He saw lesser than Moses and he departed at 70. Psalms 90 verse 10. 90 verse 10 Psalms, the book of Psalms, 90 and verse 10. The days of our years are three score years. Three score there means 60 and 10. So 60 plus 10, that's 70. And if by reason of strength they be four score <laughs> years, yet is their strength, labor and sorrow. For it is soon cut off and will fly away. That was David here speaking. He saw 70 and that was what God gave him. Paul departed to glory as Paul the aged. You can see that account in the book of Philemon chapter 1 verse 9. Philemon chapter 1 verse 9. Yet for love's sake I rather beseech thee be such an one of Paul the aged and now also a prisoner of Christ. He was an aged man. An aged man. So the question now is this. How many years can you see? How many years can you see? Do you mean it? As far. We're in a spiritual environment, please. I want you to be serious. <laughs> as far as your eyes can see, it shall be given unto you. Scriptures cannot be broken. God has vowed that with wrong life will I satisfy you. When we read for our call to worship, Psalms 91, verse 16, He said He's ready to satisfy you. But how long do you want to enjoy this longevity for? Is it 70? Is it 120? Even if you want, is it 150 you want? God can do it. In good head, in sound mind. As far as your eyes can see it, it shall be given unto you. Amen. Don't be afraid of death. No. No. I can see myself old. 
120 standing preaching. I can see myself bouncing in the Lord with my grandchildren, great grandchildren, blessing them. Not being a liability, I will stand on my own moving around. Some years ago, I mean, uh, talking about uh, Queen of England, of I mean, uh, Her Royal Highness, at 90, she was still driving. At 90. Some people, they are 30, but they are already looking like 50. You need to speak to your body. Body, hear you the word of the Lord. <laughs> Adjust. <laughs> I pray that God will grant you wisdom in Jesus' mighty name. Anyone here that is carrying death sentence, I reverse it in the name of Jesus Christ. By the blood of Jesus, you shall live and not die in the name of Jesus Christ. Quickly, let's look at the following things that are demanded for us to live long life. The following are the demands of the covenant of longevity. Number one is that you must be born again. 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 This is Jesus Christ speaking here in John 3, from verse 3 to 5. Jesus answered and said unto him, Very, very, I say unto you, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus said, well, How can a man be born again when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born again? <laughs> and Jesus Christ said, No. Very, very, I say unto you, Except a man is born of the water, that is, you are baptized, and also, you are born of the Spirit. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Inside the kingdom of God, there is no death there. There is no death there. Until you are born again, you are not a candidate for longevity. You must be born again. Number two, you must stay in love with God. You must stay in love with God. You must stay in love with God. Look at it, Psalms 91. When we read as God to worship from verse 14 to 16, because he had set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. That's God talking about you, that he will deliver you. I thought so I was saying amen to it. Yeah. So whatever negative report, medical report, negative medical report that, if, that has been written concerning you, I see God reversing it in the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone that is plotting death for you, I decree that their plan will return back to their head in the name of Jesus Christ. He said there that he will deliver you. I will set him on high because he had known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. And I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. And verse 16, he said, with long life I will satisfy him and her. And show him my salvation. I pray that God will satisfy you with long life in the name of Jesus Christ. God Almighty will satisfy you with long life in the name of Jesus Christ. You shall not die young in the name of Jesus. Remain in love with God. He's a giver of life. He's a giver of life. That's why he's eternal God. He's eternal God. Remain in love with him. Remain connected to him. Remain connected to him. Number three, remain committed in serving God and the interests of his kingdom. You cannot be serving God and God will leave you alone. God will continue to serve you to make sure you are fit to live long. Why? Because the laborers are few, but the harvest is what is ripe, is plenty. It will be a big blue on God to allow you to go. As you keep serving him, keep serving, you are adding value to his kingdom. You are relevant to him. He will ensure that he looks after you. He keeps you fit and strong to live long, to live longer. Number four, you must set yourself free from the fear of death. Like I said earlier, it's not the death that will, come, that, that will kill people, but the fear of it. Job chapter 3, verse 24 to 25. Job 3, 24 to 25. Job was speaking to see for my son coming before I eat. And my wearing are poured out like the waters. For the things which I greatly fear is come upon me. And that which I was afraid of is come upon me. 
I pray for someone this morning. Every fear, spirit of fear, they are arrested and destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. Number five now, or four, number five. Be committed to a life of joy and rejoicing. Be committed to a life of joy and rejoicing. Make sure that you are not caught in sorrow. Rather, be rejoicing, celebrate God Almighty. Why? Because that's the key to long life. That's the key to long life. That's the key to long life. According to the medicals, they said when you are rejoicing, when you are joyful, you release positive chemicals into your system, into your body. But when one is bitter, when one is sorrowful, they release bad chemicals into the system. And the bottom line is that it goes about to cause cancer. It's cancerous. That's why Paul the Apostle speaking, he said, rejoice. Yeah, again I said, rejoice. Proverbs 17.22, Proverbs 17.22. A merry heart dwelt good like a medicine. So, joy and rejoicing is medicinal. It's medicinal. But a broken spirit dries the bone. When one is full of sorrow, it dries the bone. full of joy and keep rejoicing. I pray that nothing will tamper with your joy in the name of Jesus Christ. Nothing will tamper with your joy in the name of Jesus Christ. Nothing will tamper with your joy in the name of Jesus Christ. Another one is that you must be committed in speaking the right words. Be committed in speaking the right words. Don't speak negative words. Don't speak anything that is contrary to the word of God. Proverbs 18.21 Proverbs 18.21 Proverbs 18.21 Death and life is in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So, make sure you use your tongue rightly. Why? Because your mouth will determine your experience in life. Either life or death. You must use your tongue positively according to the word of God. So, if you desire to see life, speak life. Speak life. Speak words of victory over death. Don't stop speaking it. Psalms 34, 11 to 12. 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 Come, ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. And verse 12. What man is he that desired, that desired life? And love it many days that he may see good. If you want to see good, if you want to see many days, many years, use your mouth wisely. And I see God helping you in the name of Jesus Christ. Lastly, is that you must make sure that your faith is in place. Because whenever challenge comes, you take up the shield of faith against the spirit of death. You must take your feet. Ephesians 6.16 Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench the fiery dart of the enemy. Anytime the devil is bringing negative thought to you, you cancel with the blood of Jesus Christ. You cancel with the blood of Jesus Christ. Don't allow it to stay. You destroy it. You cancel it. You reject it. It's not my portion. I shall live and not die to declare the works of the Lord. You declare it. And I pray that God will empower you to continue to use your mouth and your feet will not fall in the name of Jesus Christ. I would like you to rest your feet this morning and let's go ahead and appreciate God and thank him and give him praise. Give him glory, give him honor, give him adoration for his word that he has sent your way this morning. Celebrate him, magnify him. Give him glory, give him honor. We celebrate you, Lord. We exalt you. We honor you. Be thou exalted. Be thou glorified. Be thou magnified. Thank you, Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Please, all eye close, all head bow. If you are in this service, you have not yet surrendered your life. I would like you to make that decision today. If you are in this service, you have not yet said yes to Jesus Christ and no to Satan. 
This is the moment for you to make that decision. Please, all eye close, all head bow. All eye close, all head bow. I would like you to put your hand on your chest, your right hand on your chest. Or you are in this service, you want to rededicate your life. Until you surrender your life to him, he cannot preserve you. You cannot live long. You are still in the camp of Satan. And according to the, according to the word of the Lord in John 10.10, 10, he said, The enemy have, has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Satan has no any other mission away from that. But Christ said, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. If you are in this service, you have not yet surrendered your life to Christ. Or you want to dedicate your life to him. Why not make up your mind today and put your right hand on your chest and I will pray with you. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. If you are putting your right hand on your chest, say, May Lord Jesus, I come to you today as a sinner. Forgive me my sins. Wash me with your precious blood. I confess you this day as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for receiving me. Thank you for accepting me in Jesus' mighty name. Let me pray for you. Father in heaven, we thank you for this precious soul. Thank you for this mystery. We pray, Lord, that you establish him in the faith. Grant him the grace, Lord, to remain in this, this faith until your coming. Satan, take your hands off him. I cover you with the blood of Jesus. Father, write his name in the book of life. Thank you for you've done it. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let the church say, Amen.